If he said something like that, I... You can't let people play with your fucking reputation and name, that's for sure. I know people are telling me to chill out, but it's not fucking funny. you try it, you might have even observed this before, the surface of the water will not be flat, the surface of the water will actually be higher near the glass than it is when it's away from the, cl the glass. It forms a shape that looks something that looks something like that. And so the first thing we might ask is, well, what, what do we call this thing? And this right over here is called a meniscus. Meniscus. And in particular, this meniscus, because it is, the fluid is higher near the container than it is when you're away from the container, we would call this a concave, concave meniscus. And you might say, well, if this is a concave meniscus, are there any situations where we might have a convex meniscus? Well, sure, you can have a convex meniscus. If you were to take that same glass beaker, instead of filling it with water, if you filled it with, say, mercury. If you filled it with mercury, you would get a meniscus that looks like this, where there's a bulge near the center when you're further away from the container than when you're at the container. And the and so let me actually just label this. This is a convex, convex meniscus. But it's one thing to just observe this and, and to name them, to say, hey, this is a meniscus, this is a concave meniscus. But a more interesting question is, why does it actually happen? And so you might imagine this concave meniscus is because the fluid is more attracted to the container than it is to itself. And you might be saying, wait, wait, hold on, hold on a second here. We've been talking about how, how water has, the, how it has its polarity, it has partial negative end, each water, molecule, each water molecule is a partially negative end, has partially positive ends at the hydrogens. Let me write this down. Partial, partial positive charges at the hydrogens and that causes this hydrogen bonding to form and water, and that's what kind of gives water all of these special properties. You're telling me that it's more attracted to the glass than it is to itself? And I would say, yes, I am telling you that. And you can imagine why it is going to be more attracted to the glass than itself, because glass actually has, the, 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 the molecules in glass actually are quite polar. Glass, typically made up of a silicon, a silicon oxide a lattice, for every one silicon atom, you have two oxygen atoms. You see that right over there. For every one, for every one silicon, you have two oxygen atoms. And it turns out that the the electronegativity dis difference between oxygen and silicon is even higher than the electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen. Silicon is even less electronegative than hydrogen. So the oxygens are really able to hog silicon's electrons especially the ones that are, in, that are involved in the bonding. So you have partial charges, partial positive charges form at the silicon, and then you still have partial negative charges form, form around the oxygens, form around the oxygens. These are partial negative and partial positive at the silicon. And so you can imagine what's going to happen at the interface, and let me make this clear what's going on. This, what I am, what I am circling right now, that is the water. This right over here, that's the water molecules. And what we see over here, what we see over here, these are the glass molecules. So this is the glass right over here. And sure, the water is attracted to itself uh, because of the hydrogen bonds, but it has some kinetic energy. Remember, these things are jostling around, they're bouncing around, we're in a liquid state. And so you can imagine all of a sudden maybe, maybe this, let me see, maybe this character, this water molecule right over here, Maybe a moment ago it was right over here, but it popped up here, just got knocked by another molecule, had enough kinetic energy to jump up here. But once it came up, it came in contact with the glass surface right over here, this, the, the glass molecules, it stuck to them because it's partially, it's partially positive end. It's partially positive end in the hydrogen. Let me do that in that green color. 
partially positive end at the hydrogens would be attracted to the partially negative ends of the oxygens in, uh, in the glass. And so it'll stick to it. This is actually a stronger partial charge than what you would actually see in the water because there's a bigger electronegativity difference between the silicon and the oxygen in the glass than the oxygen and the hydrogen in the water. So these things just keep bumping around. Maybe there's another water molecule that just gets knocked in the right way. All of a sudden for you know a very brief moment, it gets knocked up here. And then it's going to stick to the glass. And this phenomenon of something sticking to its container, we would call that adhesion. So what you see going on here, that is called adhesion. Adhesion. And an adhesion is the reason why you also see the water a little bit higher there. And when you see when you talk about something sticking to itself, we call that cohesion. And that's what the hydrogen bonds are doing inside the water. So this right over here, that over there, that is co. That is cohesion. So that's why we have uh, things, why we observe a meniscus like this. But there's also, there's even more fascinating properties of adhesion. If I were to take, if I were to take a container of water, if I were to take a container of water, and just to be clear what's going on here with the mercury, the mercury is more attracted to itself than it is to the glass container, so it bulges right over there. Well, let's, let's go back to water. So let's say this is a big tub of water. I fill it, so I, I fill the water right over here. Now let's say I take a glass too. And the material matters. It has to be a polar material. That's why you see the meniscus in glass, but you might not see it or you won't see it if you're dealing with a plastic tube because the plastic does not have that polarity. Let's say you were to take a glass tube, a thin glass tube this time, so much thinner than even a beaker. So you take a thin glass tube and you stick it in the water, you will observe something very cool. And I encourage you to do this if you get your hands on a thin glass tube you will notice that the water is actually going to defy gravity and start climbing up this thin glass tube. And so that's, that's interesting. Why is that happening? Well, this, this phenomenon, which we call capillary action, capillary, capillary action. The word capillary, it will refer to anything from you know, a very, very narrow tube. And we also have capillaries in our circulation system. Capillaries are our thinnest blood vessels, which are very, 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 very thin. And there's actually capillary action inside of our capillaries. But what we're seeing here, this is called capillary, capillary action. And it's really just this adhesion occurring more, more intensely because more of the water molecules are able to come in touch with the polar glass uh, lattice. And so you can imagine we have glass here. If you also had, uh, you also had glass over here, and actually it would be very hard to find a, something that's that thin that's on the order of only a few molecules, but this is, I'm not drawing things at scale. You can imagine now, okay, maybe another water molecule could jump up here, stick to the glass there, and then one just gets bumped the right way, jumps up and jumps there. And if, if we didn't have a polar container, if we didn't have a hydrophilic container, well then, then the thing might just jump back down. But because it went up there, it's got, it kind of just stuck to it. And then it's vibrating there, and then maybe another water molecule gets attracted to it because of its hydrogen bonds, and then it, it gets bumped the right way. And then it gets, it gets bumped with a higher part of the container, but then it sticks there. And so it starts climbing the container. And that's what capillary action is. And it's not just some neat parlor trick. We actually probably use capillary action in our everyday lives all the time. It's beyond the fact that it's actually happening in your capillaries in your body that allows you to live. But if you have a, if you spill something on your counter, so let's say that's, that's a spill right over there. You spill some, maybe you spill some water or you spill some, some milk. And if you take a paper towel, if you take a paper towel, in fact, if you took a paper towel like this, if you, if you held it vertically, you will see the water start to be absorbed into the paper towel. This, this kind of absorption action that you see, that actually is capillary action. It's the water going into the small little gaps of the paper towel, but that's because it is, it is attracted to the actual paper towel. Wow. Amazing. Never knew that. Got to get my high score in con, though. What we have here is a zoom in of the surface of water. So up here you have the air. This is the air. These are some air molecules. Maybe they're nitrogen molecules. They're fairly far apart. In fact, in reality, they would be even more far apart than this. And then over here you have water molecules. We've seen this many times. You have the oxygen atom, and it's bonded to two hydrogen atoms. And the oxygen atom likes to hog the electrons more. It's more electronegative. So you have a partially negative charge at this end and partially positive ends at this end. And then attraction between the partially positive ends and the partially negative ends 
That's what keep, gives water all sorts of neat properties. That, those are the hydrogen bonds. Those are the hydrogen bonds that give water all sorts of neat properties and keep it in its liquid state at just standard temperature and pressure. Now what I want to think about is the surface in particular. And if you look at the surface of water, it, it might look completely smooth, but if you zoom in on a molecular level, you'll see that it's just made up of these molecules. But roughly speaking, roughly speaking, let's just say that this is roughly the surface, the surface of the water. The surface of the water. Now, what's going on at the surface? Well, all of these molecules are interacting through hydrogen bonds. Let's say this molecule right over here, it has hydrogen bonds pulling on it upwards, up to this one, pulling it this way, pulling it downwards, pulling it in really, really to some degree, almost you know, every, every direction. And they all have their kinetic energy and they're bumping around, but they're flowing past each other. The hydrogen bonds are giving that cohesiveness. The molecules are attracted to each other. But if you look at the, the molecules on the surface, Funny if I sued Destiny, right? That'd be good content. Be fucking hilarious. too. Fucking guy will say anything for a click. He's not accepting my friend request. Does anybody have the video in question? Oh, he accepted my friend request. Steve. Hey, what's up, buddy? I thought we were friends. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, sure. But I mean, what do you want me to say? What, what about, how about, I know Martin, and I don't think he'd do something like this. I don't know you well enough to know if you'd fucking rug pull or not. Damn. Well, why don't you, why don't you, why you look into the facts? I spent the last fucking eight weeks of my life on this software. I have 15 people working for me. I interviewed 25 VCs for funding. You think I would fucking do this to myself? 
I have no idea. That's a lot of work to put in to fucking lose $400,000 on, well, on, like, on like an unsecured machine. I don't know which one to say, dude. Damn. Well, why don't you use your common fucking sense? Why well, use my common fucking sense? Common sense shows that either something nefarious happened or something was so unbelievably, like, just unimaginably incompetently. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you victim blaming me for fucking, you know, losing, for getting hacked? Which is it? You, did, you didn't get hacked. You downloaded a rat. Sure. Oh, so so now I downloaded. So now so now I downloaded a rat. You, before you said it was a rug pull. How do you think those two things are mutually exclusive? They are fucking mutually exclusive. I didn't intentionally fucking hurt myself.